Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm here in the Grand Canyon in Arizona. Just look at that view behind me. I'm on the Angel Trail at the moment. So I'm gonna explore some of the Grand Canyon. It's really massive, so I'm not gonna see the whole thing, but I'm just gonna follow where this trail takes me. Um, right away, the moment I've arrived here, I mean, that is a beautiful vista to paint, but I do want to hike a bit, explore, see different compositions rather than just set up my easel and paint straight away. But certainly this can make for a really beautiful painting. Uh, there's some really great paintings I've seen of uh, the Grand Canyon. Famously, Thomas Moran, one of the Hudson River School painters, a sort of pioneer of American landscape painting. And he painted a really beautiful view of the Grand Canyon. I think he may have actually done more than one painting. So it definitely is a part of the world which has inspired a lot of artists. The scale of it, the enormity of it. And then you've got the sunlight hitting these rocks. You've got the blue cast shadows in the distance. You've got the atmospheric perspective because it is so massive. A lot of interesting rock formations. And as the sun is out, as it seems to be out all the time here in Arizona, it's going to be a lot about painting light and shadow looking at the shadow shapes and painting the shadows as abstract shapes and focusing on that difference between the color temperature in the lights and the coolness of the color temperature in the shadows. So let's enjoy this trail and let's uh, find a good spot in the Grand Canyon to paint. <laughs> So one interesting thing is there's quite a few people who are traveling the Grand Canyon on the back of mules. I think that's something you can do. You can pay to, to hire a mule and they take you out in a big pack, which would be quite a cool experience, I think. on the trail and I've seen this view which I think is completely breathtaking. You get this massive vista and this view through the canyon which is certainly a really powerful composition. I like how the distant cliffy parts of the canyon have a lot of atmospheric perspective on them. They're sort of a bluey grey which really pushes them back in space given a bit of the sense of scale that the Grand Canyon has. I'm going to be painting on a relatively small canvas panel and the, part of the reason I stopped here as well is because I've walked down, I've gone past the three mile point. There's further to go to the bottom, but then once I get to the bottom, I'm going to have to walk all the way back up to the top. So I thought this, more or less halfway, um, was a good place to stop, paint, and then that way at least it won't be too hard and probably won't have to walk back in the dark, which would be incredibly difficult. So let's start painting. Remember, please do subscribe to my channel. On my palette, I've got titanium white, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre. Cadmium red, alizarin crimson, raw rumber, permanent green, ultramarine blue, and cerulean blue. I've applied a wash of raw rumber paint to my canvas. Now using some tissue paper, I'm wiping away the lightest sections of my composition to give me an overall value impression of the scene. Also by removing some of this raw rumber paint in the sky, it will allow me to paint a cleaner blue as I don't want this brown colour to mix with the blue paint of the sky and muddy the colour as a result. I'm sketching in the contours of the canyon using raw rumber paint. I'm trying to be specific with the angles of each section of cliff, as well as the proportions in relation to the other sections of the composition. One technique I often use when painting from life to get the correct angles in the scene is to hold my paintbrush up against the scene and rotate my arm until my brush lines up precisely against the contour of the angle that I'm checking. Then keeping my brush and my arm in the same position, I can twist my body so that I can hold my brush over the same area in my painting and see if the angle needs to be adjusted. 
Here I'm painting in the shadow shapes on the cliff on the right hand side. I'm using a colour mix of raw rumber and ultramarine blue that I've mixed together using my palette knife and then thinned down using my medium. I find in order to distinguish the shadow shapes, it helps to squint to the scene. As this helps do away with the smaller details and subtle shifts in values which can overcomplicate the scene at this stage in the painting. I'm now painting in the sky. I find it helps to make three separate and slightly different colour mixes for the sky on a cloudless day like this. Immediately above the horizon, I use a colour mix consisting mostly of cerulean blue and titanium white with a touch of alizarin crimson and yellow ochre to make this a warmer, greyer blue. For the middle section of the sky, I use cerulean blue and titanium white with a small touch of ultramarine blue and for the upper section of the sky I use mostly ultramarine blue and titanium white with a touch of cerulean blue. As the sky takes on a deeper blue as it gets higher up. Here I'm painting these distant cliffs which have a light bluish colour due to atmospheric perspective. To make this colour mix I use titanium white, ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson as well as a small touch of yellow ochre to tone down the chroma of the colour mix. Using some of my kitchen roll that I've just dipped into my terps, I'm wiping away some of the raw umber paint on the cliff on the left hand side of the painting to make it closer to the tonal value of the actual cliff in nature. I'm now using a colour mix of alizarin crimson, yellow ochre and titanium white with a small touch of ultramarine blue to paint this rock layer in the distance. One of the interesting things that I noticed when I was descending the canyon to my painting spot is that each rock layer has a slightly different colour. Some that were higher up were more of a sandy yellow and some which were lower down had a more pink reddish hue to them. And as the canyon gets lower and closer to the Colorado River which runs through it, the scene begins to change and there's more foliage and green plants and trees right at the bottom of the canyon. As I paint this vista between these giant cliffs, I try to keep the shifts in tonal value minimal whilst varying the shifts in hue for the distinct layers. I'm also keeping the chroma in these colours quite low, so in effect all these colours would look grey if they were placed next to a pure colour pigment. As if I were to paint things in this section too dark in tonal value or too chromatic, too vibrant in colour, this area would lose the appearance of being far in the distance and as a result this would diminish the sense of scale in the scene. Here I'm painting a few shadows into the distant cliffs using a colour mix of ultramarine blue and titanium white. I'm now massing in this cliff on the left hand side with a mid-tone value of the approximate colour for the overall section. I can use this as a base to work on top of with lighter highlights and darker shadows. 
I'm now getting more specific with the shadows on the cliff on the right. I'm painting some warm reflected light into certain areas which are receiving light being reflected from the cliff opposite. And I'm also adding some cooler bluer sections for areas which are facing the sky and therefore receiving blue reflected light from that. I also establish some dark accents for occlusion shadows of the cracks and caves within the rock face. As I start to paint these sections in light next to the shadow shape, I try and pay close attention to the variety and the intricacies in the shadow edges between these sections, as the softness or sharpness in the edge quality helps dictate the surface texture and three-dimensional form of the rock face. Using a colour mix of cadmium red and raw umber, I'm now painting in the dark accents on the cliff on the left hand side. These shadows tend to be quite warm in colour temperature as they're receiving reflected light from the rock face which has a mostly warm orange hue. I'm now using some smaller round brushes which have a fine point to them to pick out small details such as these trees in the foreground and the subtle shifts in colour within the surface of the rock face on the left. So I hope you've enjoyed that video of me painting this landscape in the Grand Canyon. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you give me a super thanks, I'd be really grateful. And I'll see you in the next video.